Welcome to the Waves Business Coaching Podcast, where you can learn how to grow as a leader, inspire your team, and optimize the operations in your organization. I'm your host, Jacob Carnes, and this week on the podcast, I talk to Wes Gay, a story brand guide, about the importance of using the right words in your business. If you want to learn how you can get the best out of your team in your organization, be sure to go to wavesbusinesscoaching.com, which is linked in the episode description. We would love to equip you with the tools and resources to optimize your business and give you peace of mind as a leader. Let's dive into my conversation with Wes Gay on the importance of using the right words in your business. Wes, welcome to the, uh, welcome to the Waves Business Coaching Podcast, man. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for being on. Wes, I know you. I'd love for you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself and why you're here. Yeah, these days what I do and for the last seven or eight years, I help brands figure out the right words for marketing and sales so they can, in a very unspiritual uh, result, make more money Right at the end of the day. And if they're a nonprofit, it's raise more money. I've been doing that since right. 2016. Before that, I worked in churches and nonprofits and a, a variety of roles. I was media, production, communications, did music because I have a music degree, which is useless these days. And a lot, of, it's very useless. Uh, I also worked in nonprofits as well. I was the IT guy and the quote marketing guy more than once. And that was only because I was the only person on staff under 40. And they go, oh, you're under 40. You understand the internet. Can you be our IT guy? That's which right. just means you restart computers and you restart printers when you're in an office. So uh, yeah, that's what I did. And then in 2016, kind of had an opportunity for a career change. And I had been following Donald Miller specifically since 2005. I read his book, his smash, Blue Likes Jazz, that sold a million plus copies in a couple of years. Had read a bunch of his other stuff. And in late 2016, they were offering this copywriter certification. I'd worked in nonprofits. Nonprofits don't have money. And they don't have money to hire copywriters, especially. I didn't know what that meant. I just knew. Right. My wife encouraged me with, she said, you're a good writer. We have an opportunity for something, a fresh start, something new. Why don't you go try the certification? They'll send you leads. And my thought was, I'll do this until I get a quote real job. That was 2016. Yeah. We're recording this at the end of 2023. And I assume whenever somebody <laughs> listens to this, I will still be doing this, having given up and waiting for a real job because I created my own. And I get to work hopefully. with tons of brands. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, you know, what do they say? If, if God's willing and the creek don't rise, I sound like a That's grandpa right. there. But <laughs> I've helped a few hundred brands at this point, ranging from... Uh, a golden retriever puppy broker to a global or North American uh, theme park brand and a billion dollar brand, everybody in between tech companies, financial, advi financial advisors, SaaS, automotive, um, all kind. I mean, you name it. I've been probably involved in I've 60 plus industries serving 120 ish audiences. In fact, as we record this today, I hop on a plane the next day to work, work with a brand that did 900 million in 2022 uh, to help them get ready for not only a website brand, but realizing they have tens of thousands of employees globally and they don't have a clear message across the board that everybody understands and knows what that organization does and why they exist in the world. So I get to go be with them tomorrow. Um, last week I was in with a client that does sourcing and purchasing for auto dealerships. So it's ranges a spectrum. The number one commonality among everybody is they want to know what do we say so that people will take action, whether that's buy, whether that's leaders when you know how to engage their teams, whatever it is, what do we say so that people uh, respond? So we met, goodness, 2009 ish, uh, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think so. I, I was trying I to was think of that when I was, <laughs> we all were, weren't we in 2009? Yeah, I was, I was trying to think when we scheduled it, what year it was. And I, it, it feels like it's been so long. I don't remember. So I guess I'm at that age. I know that you, you had, a, you, you, were, you, in my mind, were an adult and I was a kid. I know that I was either right before high school, <laughs> starting high school. Uh, but you know, we met when you were doing something very different and then we were Facebook friends. I followed you for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I became an adult and, uh, had a job <laughs> and just saw you posting stuff after 2016 about this, the story brain thing. And mm -hmm. it was fascinating to me. And it was the whole idea of just like finding the right words, using story and like applying it to business. And I ended up calling you and being like, Hey, what is this? Could I use it in my work now? I was working at a Chick-fil-A yeah. restaurant and I ended up writing like a new mission statement for our restaurant. Mm -hmm. I was looking at our copy for our hiring and like mm -hmm. I, I was in charge of recruiting at the time. And so I'm like started rewriting stuff to tell a better story and get better messaging out and just became fascinated and obsessed with story brand. And it led to where I am now. So mm -hmm. one, thank you for that, uh, planting that seed. But 
For those who don't know, can you kind of explain story brand at a high level and how it helps business leaders find the right words to say? Yeah. So story is what we call a sense-making device. It's a filter that helps us understand the world around us. You and I have young kids. Um, we have three, nine, seven, and three. And as each, as they've grown, you know, we've read a lot of the books at night, this, you know, that teach, that use stories to teach principles. They teach ideas because our brains are yeah. wired to understand story. People of faith listening to the podcast will know in the Bible, there's a lot of times where Jesus told stories. There's stories that are used as analogies in the Old Testament. And that, and we, we use story to communicate big ideas in really, really simple ways because that's how our brains really operate. Story brand takes classic kind of storytelling elements and puts it into a simple filter for you to be able to take any idea, whether you're trying to sell a product or a service, or you're trying to communicate something internally, big global company, local campaign, whatever it is, and says, how do we use a structure, a format to filter that language, to focus on the things that are most likely to get people to engage? You know, in today's world, we're getting hit a thousand miles an hour every single day with marketing messages, advertising, but they're just communications, text, email, Slack, phone, you know, they, there's these things called phone calls people still do. Yeah. Um, Disney World has these like these museum, these antique sections with these things called pay phones still. It's like if they had an antiques museum, that's what they are. Um, but it's, we're constantly getting hit. And so today, more important than ever, we've got to figure out how do we communicate in a way that's going to engage people and get right. them to respond to whatever we're going to do. So we use story because we know story works. Like what people find out when they get into story brand is that it, not only is it a formula, but it's a formula that literally Hollywood uses. You know, when I work with right. companies and I go to this organization, even on in a couple of days, uh, I will talk about Top Gun Maverick and I will show you, I will show people on a slide how Top Gun Maverick and all of its incredible, you know, incredibleness in $1.6 billion later literally follows a formula that I can show you how it is in Mary Poppins. I can show it to you in The Lion King. I can show it to you in all those stupid Hallmark Christmas movies that are out right now because we're recording this in <laughs> December. Right. Like they Same story. All, they all follow the formula. And you know what? They People pay attention because they follow a formula and a structure. So story brand is a, is a framework that is based on that. It goes back to Plato or Aristotle, you know, Joseph Campbell here of a thousand faces. Some people who have studied story know about him, but it's a seven part formula that we use. So we can fill, it's a filter to focus our messaging. And one of the things I think it's so useful, particularly for leaders is it forces you to change your perspective. So you can see things through the eyes of your audience. You know, the, the big paradigm shift, as we talk about in story, any story has a, a, a character. We call him a hero, a protagonist. Who's the movie about, right? Um, I was on a plane last week and I had a confession. I had never seen National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right? 36. Never? I just never, I'd never seen it. I just never got oh, around to man. it. It was on the plane. I didn't want to work. I was flying back from being with a client for a couple of days. I'm like, I'll watch it. Who is the hero of that movie? Clark. The, the movie is about <laughs> Clark. What yep. does he want? He wants to have a great Christmas. And we know this just within the first 10 or 15 minutes, the, right. when he first talks about putting the pool in, right? And they're, you know, the whole bit. We know what the movie's about and we know what the story is. And they follow that formula almost step by step, right? Of what that looks like. When, and the difference is for brands is we all think we're Clark, right? We think we're that main protagonist or in Top Gun Maverick. We think, we think we're Maverick. We think the story is about us as our brand or as a leader. You think it's about us as a leader. The reality is it's not. In Top Gun Maverick, the story is about them, but we're not Maverick. We're Iceman in Top Gun Maverick. We're the one that says, hey, I'm the one that's going to help you. I'm going to help you get to where you want to go. I'm going to help you in that scene in Maverick, Top Gun Maverick, when Iceman and Maverick are talking, or in that scene in, Maverick, in Iceman's office. It's, Ma it's Iceman saying, I'm going to help you finally admit and realize the thing you need to do, right? I'm going to, I've been the one kind of, and it, they allude to it throughout the movie, he keeps Maverick out of trouble and keeps him in the Navy and blah, blah, blah. But that's the position we take. We call it the guide. We're the ones that say, hey, main character of the story, who the story is about, I know what you want. I know the problems you have. I'm going to talk about the problems you have, but I, un and I understand those with empathy, but I, and I also have the authority to help you get to where you're going to go. When you as a leader figure that out, not only for marketing and sales, which can help you make a lot more money, but when you figure that out, that shift out internally and how you communicate to your team, it helps you better see how to, not only how to communicate more clearly, but also how to be more focused in what, how you're leading people and taking them where you want to go. So the story brand framework, you mentioned it being seven parts. 
He hit mm-hmm. on a couple of them. So a character yeah. is step one. That's mm-hmm. your your audience at that point. Yeah. What are those other six steps in the story brain framework? Yeah. So the first thing is in any great movie, in any great story, you have a character. This is the the hero, the protagonist, right? This this what the movie or the story is about. And uh, in your marketing or in sales or in leadership, it's the audience. Who's your customer? Who are your employees, et cetera? That's who it's about. The second yeah. thing is a problem. Uh, people pay attention when there's tension, period. <laughs> Right. right. It doesn't matter if it's the news or who's in the college football playoffs, which is not the topic of today, but we're recording this <laughs> a day after the 2023 announcement. Jacob and I were talking about that earlier. Uh, anytime there's a problem, people pay attention when there's tension. Think of a yep. movie you've seen recently when the core problem of the movie is over or resolved, the movie's over, right? National Lampoon's Christmas yep. Vacation, they resolved the issue about Clark's bonus, right? That was the problem. Is he going to get it or not? Within what, like two or three minutes, the credits are rolling. That's right. Uh, Taken. Liam Neeson finds his daughter on that boat within five minutes. I mean, Lord of the Rings, the problem is solved in the final movie. And then two hours later, the movie's over, right? (laughs) Lord of the Rings is the exception. (laughs) Return of the King. Uh, But anyways, we have, and it's the problems. What are they? And it's the, what we call the external problems, the surface level issues, the things that are competing that are causing our main character to not get what they want. In your case, your customer, what's keeping them from moving forward in your, in internally on your team, what's keeping them from, taking the next step or, or doing the thing that they need to do. The underneath that, there's what we call the internal problem. What are the feelings that are happening in yeah. marketing and sales? People make decisions based on how they feel about a product or service. Right. In in our work, people uh, engage and we address how they're feeling. Are they anxious? Are they overwhelmed? Are they concerned? Do they feel uncertain? What are those internal feelings that people have? We want to think about those because that helps make a great story. And then underneath all of those, we have the philosophical statement, kind of the philosophical problem. Why, why are the problems above just wrong? Right? A lot of times this is you should or you deserve language, right? I use Chick-fil-A as an example all the time when I'm talking about the problems. Every fast food place on the planet solves the same external problem. I'm hungry. We have seven Chick-fil-A's within 20 minutes of our house because we live outside of Atlanta. It's like right. you have to have at least six within a 20 minute radius, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. But one of the Chick-fil-A's, before they had to move to a bigger parking lot, it was KFC on the left, Chick-fil-A in the middle, and Taco Bell on the right. And one time we were going to that one, double drive through, snake snaking through the parking lot. Not wrapped on the building, snaking through the parking lot. And I looked, and there's one person at KFC and two at, and two at Taco Bell. And I thought, well, that's it. Like, all three of these serve the same external problem. I'm hungry. The difference is Chick-fil-A, woven into the culture, has always said, internally, we know how people feel about the typical fast food experience. You go to other fast food places and it's like you walk in the door and it's like the lights are flickering like a New York City <laughs> police detective show. Like you're yeah. in trouble in the interrogation room and the employees are surprised you're there. Right. And the door shuts behind you and you're like, it has come to this. That's right. right. Chick-fil-A. I mean, there's flowers on the table. It's bright. It's clean, which is always helpful when you're traveling. We always stop at Chick-fil-A when we travel because we know it's Chick-fil-A and Bucky's are our two go-tos. Uh, here in the South. Kids. Great with kids, great bathrooms. We know, and we know everybody's going to eat. We know that's right. We know that too. Um, but it's that Chick Fil A solves that internal problem people have. Right? Yeah. I remember when Chick Fil A tested the mom valet years ago before the app came out. Is the thing where you would pull the drive through order and say, "I want the mom valet," and then you'd pay, you park, and when you come in, your table was already set. Right? Because that yeah. solves the problem for parents of being embarrassed that your kids are trying to do Cirque du Soleil off the handrails waiting in line, you know, for Chick-fil-A. Right. <laughs> and then there's the philosophical position. Anybody familiar with Chick-fil-A knows Chick-fil-A has a philosophical stance about how they want to serve their customer. Right. And we all know that. And we see it's woven. So that's the, the problem. So you have a character yeah. who wants something, but they can't get it because they face problems and there's obstacles in their way. And so yeah. much of the movie is about the problems. The story is about the problems. Your streaming shows are about the problems. Right. Will Ted Lasso, you know, will he end up with Rebecca? Will they win the the Premier League? Whatever. And then you have <laughs> the guide character. You have the character that comes along and says, I understand your problems and I have the authority to help you get what you want. This is yeah. Yoda in Star Wars is a classic example. Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid. I mean, Rafiki in The Lion King. I mean, we could go on forever on that one. That's the space that you as a leader and you as an organization occupy for your audience, whether your audience is your team or your customers. You're the one that's trying to help them win. You're entering into the story of that that person yeah. trying to help them transform the next step. When you have a plan, right? Again, I use Top Gun Maverick because that's that's one of the most rewatchable movies that's come out in the last 10 or 15 years. 
and we shouldn't argue over it because I'm right. Like there's not many movies <laughs> that are kind of last decade that are that rewatchable. You put can you put IMAX cameras in F-16s or F-18s, and of course you're going to want to see that movie. That's right. Um, but so much of that is the plan. What do we do? It's the training montage in every sports movie, right? It's that kind of thing. Like people need to know what to do next. I want to do step one, step two, step three. If I'm a leader, I'm going to double down on that element of the met of the brand story brand framework and of story, because I always want people to leave with what do we do next? Like here is the path. And I always say yeah. there's, there's two different ways to see a plan as a leader. What, what's the action? Is it, is it an action plan or is it an awareness plan? Hmm. Or here are the things I need to do or here are the things I need to know if I'm a team That's member, good. if I'm a prospect, it's how do I move forward in the sales process? All right. That's the plan. Yeah. Then we have the call to action. What's the next step people ought to take, right? Schedule a call, book a day, you know, talk to an expert, buy now, register here, start your order. What is that sales step people need to take as a leader? What is the next action they need to take in order to pursue whatever you, you've told them yeah. to do, whether in a meeting, company goals, et cetera. And if they do all that, it's going to end in one of two ways, success or failure, right? Success, a vision of life. If all the, if all the problems are solved, right? 20 years ago, P90X comes to market. Nobody woke up and said, man, you know what I really want to do? I want to buy me a DVD set. I mean, I can't <laughs> wait right. to watch an infomercial and buy a DVD set and get a wall chart and a meal prep guide so I can eat some chicken and broccoli. Man, That's yeah. right. Everybody watched the P90X infomercial 20 years ago and said, I want to look like him or I want to look like her. It's the after pictures. It's the testimonials. That's what sells stuff yep. like that. Give people a picture of life on the other side. If we follow through with this, if you as the prospect buy our product or service, how is your life going to get better? On the flip side, what's at stake? We want to, we talk about it being failure. How did their pro, how did the problems get worse? If your team doesn't do this thing, what's at stake? You're going to get fewer leads, which means you'll get fewer customers, which means you'll make less money, or your profit margins will shrink, or uh, you'll have a harder time hiring, or you'll have a harder time pushing the vision forward. Yeah. If I'm a leader, it's that stuff. If it's externally to an, uh, a customer, then I'm probably saying stuff like you, you're going to struggle to grow. You're going to struggle. You know what? It, Take the problems we identified and say, how do those get worse? Put all those together and you've got a story, right? And then, and then you take that and you apply that to your overall brand and your overall marketing and sales. But then you reuse that framework, that formula. And every time you need to communicate anything, you filter it through that, that framework, right? If I'm sending one email as a, as my, as a weekly marketing email, I'm, I'm filtering it. Who is my audience? What's the problem right. I'm trying to solve for right here, et cetera. If I'm leading a meeting, just a weekly meeting, I'm saying, what's the problem? I was with a company doing their strategic planning for 2024 and they were bringing some stuff up. And I literally at one point said, can somebody help me understand the problem we're trying to solve for? And we sat for a minute. Somebody I said, is it this? And they go, oh yeah, that's the problem. Right. And I said, oh, well now so, we need to have a plan yep. to lay that out. Um, you know, I've done this a bunch with a bunch of brands. I think, that's one of the mistakes people make is they think I have to use every element every time I communicate or they think, Oh, it's just for my website. Both are wrong. Right. It's just a way to communicate and to filter through in a way that we know is going to engage people. And that's where I think it helped me understand it better is this isn't just a marketing device. Mm -hmm. This is a messaging and a communication device and yeah. any communication as a leader can be filtered through this. And like you said, it's an exercise of, like just understanding your audience better and flipping the mm -hmm. script and putting yourself in the other chair and say, okay, yeah. how is this going to be received? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how can this be better received? How can I say this best the first time? Yep. And it's really helped me with my communication, even at my previous job, like you said, with emails to people, <laughs> if I'm just yeah. thinking, okay, what do I need them to do after this email? Okay. Then let me make sure yeah. that is clear <laughs> as mm -hmm. I write this. Yeah. It, it's, it's clear as kind is what a friend of right. mine says. You know, people aren't usually idiots. I mean, it happens. Um, we all do stupid things when we have newborns because we're all on newborn brain. That's right. Uh, outside of that, people are usually just busy. Yep. And I think this is a big thing that leaders, I, I know when I was working in organizations, I had leaders who, I, who, who committed this, mis, this leadership sin, not a real sin, just leadership sin. Yeah, the companies yeah. do it all the time, which is partly why, which is what is going to keep me in business probably forever is we forget that the people we're talking to, they don't live in our heads. They're not in our meetings. They're not in our notebooks or wherever we're taking notes. They're not in our yep. planning sessions. You know, our customers don't work for our company 40 hours. <laughs> right, right. But some people communicate to their customer base like they do. 
It's like no right. wonder nobody's buying this because nobody understands. You're talking to them like they're employees. Same Person thing knowledge. with leaders. Yeah, exactly. Leaders forget like, oh, my team doesn't live in my head. They don't know what I'm thinking in the context in which I'm saying this. Right. So what we have to do is say, we have to filter it and say, how can I be clear? How is the other person going to receive this so I can be clear to them? And then they know what to do too. One of the things we talk about quite a bit with story is when we do this, we do what we, it's called uh, opening a story loop, right? Our brains have yep. this thing where when there's a problem that's opened up, it's what draws us in. It's why we get, it's why it's so easy to get sucked into the internet, YouTube, social media, whatever, is we see things that are identified as problems and we want to know how to resolve, even if we don't care. Like, I don't care if I see a headline that says you'll be shocked at what fruit Tom Brady doesn't eat. I don't care. But then all of a sudden I'm reading an article to figure out what fruit. I think it's tomatoes by the way, but that's neither here nor there. Um, But like when we say, when we hear things that causes us to lean in. So we want to take that and leverage it to do good, to lead well and to communicate to people. So they engage with us. Otherwise, if we don't use, if we don't focus on the right words and if we aren't clear, we have to take more effort as a leader or as a company to get people back on track. We take them down one path and then it becomes a further and further divide from what we intended. So we have to push them back on track. So the right words take people down the right path and get people thinking a certain way. And it we lead them to where they we want them to go. And everything you're talking about now is internal. So this isn't just, yeah. obviously, I think if you know StoryBrand, you've probably thought about StoryBrand and marketing as one of the same. Mm-hmm. But this is internally for business leaders. This is yep. this can cost you thousands of dollars of trying to get people back on track just because yeah. your message wasn't very clear. Yeah, And that's something that I'm, I know you've seen a lot in the businesses that you've interacted with. It's mm-hmm. just how much time, energy, money can be wasted <sighs> just by not literally putting yourself in the other chair and thinking about, okay, who's my audience? What's their mm-hmm. problem? Yeah. What do they need to do based off what I have to say? How can I help mm-hmm. them get there? Let me paint a picture of what it's going to look like if they do what I say. And yeah, you know, uh, yeah, it's funny. I, I think people forget, especially leaders don't realize how much of leadership is actually a sales job. You are selling yeah. ideas to people, right? And you're asking them to buy in with their time, right? If I'm an internal leader, if I'm a leader, they have committed, this is their livelihood, so we shouldn't take that lightly. But leadership is selling them on the idea of if we do this together, if they do this in their own role, life is going to be better if they do it, right? We are constantly, and so when you are when you see it as sales and having to sell people on ideas, sell people on vision, sell people on a destination, then what it does is it allows us to, and enables us to say, has to think, how do we need to communicate better so that we can lead people there? Another thing is, When we do this from a story structure, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, here is a story that we're painting. It's the vision of the future, long term, right now, you know, in a short season, it's the holiday season, it's a campaign, whatever it is. Here's how you, here's how all this works as a story we're creating. And one of the things I'll do is also say, is realize, help organizations realize when you do that, you then give people a role to play in that story, right? When you give people the role to play, they see how they fit into the broader narrative. I think that's why people love team sports so much. You know, a great wide receiver in football is going to see how he fits into the overall team scheme and what he needs to do. I have over the last two years become, I'm not a Chiefs fan. I don't really care about the NFL. I grew up in the South. We don't have any NFL really to root for. That's a <laughs> That's <nuts>. right. <laughs> um, I, I lived in Alabama, so I think the closest thing we had was watching Alabama football. Not an Alabama fan either, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've become a big fan of um, Travis Kelsey, primarily because of his podcast with his brother, because it's hilarious, right? They're yeah. very entertaining human beings. But even here in Travis Kelsey, a tiny, you know, who's going to be a Hall of Fame tight end, talking about his role and what he's looking at, what he's, and he's talked a bunch. He played quarterback in high school, hasn't played since. He's like, I love to see things like the quarterback so I can understand what Patrick Mahomes is thinking, what he's looking right. for, what he wants. So I know how to adjust what I'm doing, or I need to think like this or that or the defense or whatever so I can better understand my position. And so that's a, that's a mindset of a leader that says, I want to better understand, I want to help people see the story and how, the overall thing. So my team can see how they fit into the story and they see their role. So they know what they need to do to be part of that, to help us all get to where we're trying to go. You know, Donna Miller said something recently. He said that leadership is an art of communication and memorization. Mm-hmm. And that like, that's your main role as a leader, which is what you were talking about there too. What are some easy steps that people can take to start finding like the right words to say, to use better words, to yeah. be better communicators in, in their business. But I'd start with something super simple. The next time you have a meeting or you're going to send an email to your team, ask yourself the questions, ask yourself a few questions. One, 
ask yourself the question, what is my audience want for me right now? What are they, you know, what are we trying, what, what are they looking for? Two, what problems do they have or what feelings or concerns do they have underneath that? All right. So I want to, I want to think about what problems might be in the heads and my, in the hearts of my, my readers. Third thing is I'm going to, I'm going to think about what are the, what do they need to know or do next as a result? In other words, if I've identified the problem, how am I going to solve that problem? Or how can they solve that right. problem on their own? Right? right. So let's say, let's say it's something related to, um, maybe they have to fill out new tax forms at the beginning of the year because we all hate it and we all forget because <laughs> we do it like once a year and yeah. nobody remembers. <laughs> We're not, nobody's an expert on this because we do it once a nope. year. Takes, anyways. So I might say, Hey, we got this. Right. And I might even say, Hey, I realize your full-time job is not filling out tax forms. So you probably feel like you forgot or you don't remember. You're afraid of doing it wrong. And you don't want to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've set the stakes. Normal things. <laughs> <Dramatic>. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what you need to do next. And then go on your Gmail or Outlook or whatever go to the numbered list and click that button and literally make one, it a two, one, two, three list so yeah. I can read it and then tell me the next thing I need to do. Right. Those are the, so those are the three things I'll do. The next thing you have to communicate is that what does my audience really want Two, yeah. what problem do they have or what problem am I trying to solve for and say it out loud? I was on a call right before this recording and somebody was talking about something. And I said, Hey, do we know what problem we're all trying to brainstorm to solve for here? Like if we can figure that out, I think it's going to help us bring clarity to this issue. <laughs> right. And then third, tell people what they need to know or do next. If you start doing that in some of the little interactions, it could be a weekly email you send. It could be an update on a project, an update on an issue internally, a campaign, a, your next one-to-one -one meeting, et cetera. I promise you're going to start to feel more confident as a communicator because you're going to have some tactical ways to communicate in a way that makes your reader feel better understood and feel like they're now bought in and part of what you're doing. That's so good. And it's easy. It's like mm -hmm. it, easy, easy in process. It's going to take some getting used to of finding what hits and what doesn't, of course, but easy in mm -hmm. process. Wes, yeah. where can people learn more about you and your business? Uh, LinkedIn.com slash whatever. I think it's like it, LinkedIn is the weird one. It's LinkedIn.com <laughs> slash a slash Wes Gay, sl uh, whatever. Yeah. Just go to LinkedIn <laughs> and look up West Gay. How about just go I'll there? link it in the I, episode I, description. Yeah. Like, everything else is just Instagram.com slash West Gay, <laughs> Facebook.com slash West yeah. Gay. Um, I almost said Twitter. The artist formerly known as Twitter, X.com slash West Gay. And then my website, westgay.com. Wes, uh, he is a plethora of information when it comes to marketing and messaging. I'm on his email list. I'd encourage you to get on the email list as well. He sends out free tips every week of how to use the right words in your business that mm -hmm. I use and find helpful. So Wes, thank you so much for your time and helping other leaders just find the right words to say. Hey, thanks for having me. See ya. See ya. A big thank you to Wes for joining me on the podcast today. If you want help finding the right words so that your business can make more money, Wes is your guide. You can check him out at westgay.com, which is linked in the episode description. You can find him on LinkedIn, X, Instagram. He's everywhere. He's helped me in my business, and he's, a, uh, he's an expert guide, and can help you find the right words to say in your business. Thank you so much for watching and listening to the Waves Business Coaching Podcast. For more free tools and resources on how you can grow your organization, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Organizations struggle to grow because they don't know how to bring the best out of their people. At Waves Business Coaching, we help you inspire your team and optimize your operations so that your organization can thrive. If you're a business leader who wants to bring the best out of your team, be sure to visit our website at wavesbusinesscoaching.com, which is linked in the episode description. If you want a free plan to help optimize your small business, take my business report, which is also linked in the episode description. In this free assessment, you'll get a diagnosis and plan that optimizes your business. This report from Business Made Simple will do in 10 minutes what many business consultants take weeks to do. Click the link in the episode description to take my business report. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Waves Business Coaching Podcast. Take care.